This is the Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege Deluxe Class Autobot 6-Gun. The figure is part of the second wave of the Deluxe Class figures for the Siege toy line. And I picked up this figure at Our Toys. Pretty cool. It combines with Ironhide. And here is 6-Gun out of packaging. Comes with a really nice set of instructions. And boy, I did not expect him to look this awesome. He looks really, really nice. Lots of articulation despite being a robot that was composed of guns. For those of you who are uninitiated with the uh, G1 toys and of Metroplex, Metroplex came with a set of guns that if you put them all together, together with some pieces from the tower, they would form a robot. This was a nice, a really nice ingenious way that Takara Tomy and Hasbro thought of uh, using the guns of Metroplex and turning it into a sort of a robot and in g1 continuity in the cartoon he was really an autonomous soldier uh, who was really uh, one of the defenders of metroplex together with slammer and scamper and this is what the g1 toy looked like so you get to see a lot of inspiration from that g1 uh, i curation and for those of you who've already picked up the Generations Metroplex, I can share your disappointment with not with that toy not having all the guns that made up Six Shot. And this is Hasbro's way of fixing that and uh, giving a lot more fan service and giving us the actual Six Gun. But instead of just guns, we get a whole new Deluxe Class action figure and he works out just nicely. Very, very impressed with this figure. I really like it. Um, didn't expect a lot, but uh, yeah. So he's just like Cog. I mean, Cog is for Fortress Maximus. If you have a Fort Max, Cog would be a great uh, add-on piece. And this guy would be for the Generations Metroplex. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the details of the figure in terms of paint apps looking very very nice i'm very happy that the battle damage or the weathering is only done on the feet and not in the other pieces parts and guns so very nice um uh, i guess weathered type of paint apps here and there um not a deal breaker but uh, i do like this overall clean look on him so in robot mode some articulation on him He's got a swivel neck, waist swivel. Uh, he's got a ball, ball hin a hinge shoulder, swivel shoulder, bicep swivel, hinge elbow, uh, no wrist articulation, ball hinge hips, thigh swivel, hinge knees, some foot articulation with the toes and the rocker pivot. So very, very cool. Now the instructions clearly say that um, he is to be combined, well, they suggest you combine him with Sideswipe, but we've already done Sideswipe with COG. So we're going to follow the box, which says that uh, he fits best with Ironhide. Now, before we do that, let's look at, in at the inventory of weapons this guy has. He's got two of these blasters, blaster pistols. He also has uh, extra smaller pistols here that connect to the uh, shoulder cannons. Okay, you can remove the arms, and the arms in themselves are weapons, I suppose, or they can be weapons. The legs are guns, and these were, again, if you remember the G1 toys, these were the main guns of Metroplex. And then finally, the torso, you can split it up like this, get rid of that, and they split into two, and these are... The other weapons just like the g1 the body was different from the chest so that's pretty cool so before we get him into his weaponizer modes let's get him into his alt mode he does have like a jet mode alt mode type of uh, configuration so first thing you want to do you want to get rid of the top part of the body and keep the this one so we get rid of these two main guns okay form main thrusters like that okay what you want to do is rotate the waist see these tabs right here you're going to attach them to these thighs uh, not a big fan of this configuration tell you honestly uh, but uh, it is there and uh, you can split the pieces and make a sort of Cybertronian jet mode out of it so 
that. And then these. Okay, like that. And these go here and here. And there you go. I mean, it's it's okay. I'm not not a big fan of this one. It works though, but yeah. And here is the defensive loadout configuration. And quite honestly, it looks more like an offensive configuration instead of defensive because he's got like it's gonna blast everybody. It kind of looks like Jake Rock. Oh, great. Yeah, that's the biggest problem with this configuration. There's just too much load on the back, and it. it Honestly, I'm not a big fan of this. I mean, it looks like Jake Rockwell's detonator in Centurions, and you could just do this, and yeah, it could be an offensive uh, configuration. It's like, but it's just way too heavy. It's just not practical, and it's it's just so ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I'm it's it's really stupid. I'm sorry, but it it kind of works aesthetically. It looks so badass, but. Seriously, I mean, Ironhide's a weapon specialist. Sure, I get it. I could totally see him doing this, but for all practical intents and purposes, it, it's not. <laughs> it's not that practical. Okay. And here is the offensive uh, configuration or offensive loadout configuration. This actually looks more like a defensive configuration with all the shield, the shoulder cannons, and the cannons on his feet. I actually think I like this more as a defensive position. I think this this kind of configuration works more. Uh, the pieces are split evenly onto the body uh, of the figure and it's a lot more stable and practical. So yeah, it, it works. Captain America. No, I'm kidding. And finally, here is the high precision launcher gauntlet configuration so basically gets rid of all the guns and converts the whole body of six gun into sort of like a an infinity gauntlet or cybertronian gauntlet with you know i can see these as fingers and you know, launching cannons and it's so this one kind of works if it weren't just so heavy <laughs> it's very difficult to pose the figure uh with this kind of uh, configuration especially his arm so yeah it's cool though, it's a cool idea, but uh, I'm not buying it. I'm not, I don't, for again, for practical purposes, it's it's just way too clunky, but it does make him look cool. He's Hellboy. And just like with COG, I made my own configuration for Six Gun, and I thought, you know, who says Optimal Optimus is the only one who can go on a hoverboard, right? Ironhide can do it too, like, like the Green Goblin, or Optimal Optimus. I mean, I thought I immediately when I saw this bit in the body of Six Gun, I thought hoverboard, and you know, I couldn't resist this kind of configuration. He's got her, his exhaust uh, thrusters right here. He's got the two detonator guns, shoulder cannons. I mean, just like Jake Rockwell's detonator, and then Cog could be Skybolt uh, of of Ace McCloud, and I, I am really digging these weaponizer modes uh for these two deluxes and uh yeah very very cool i think this is going to be my my configuration for ironhide all right some final thoughts on this figure i mean if you do have that metroplex the generations metroplex he is a great companion to it um, i'm sorry i can't take him out of packaging because this is the acg con exclusive and i already sold my hasbro version the, the regular version and uh yeah, but this is this is how he looks, uh, scale-wise with Metroplex, he looks great. The figure is gonna get a nine out of 10 for me. I think it's a great figure. I think it's a way better figure than Cog. If you have to get just one, Cog or this one, I think Six Gun is the one you wanna get. If you already have Metroplex, this is a no-brainer. You gotta get this one as, as, as a companion piece. So, there you go, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this little video review. This has been the Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Siege Deluxe Class Six Gun. Thanks for watching.